we're doing it again. Oh my goodness. Right, can I remember how it works? Can you? Have we all picked up where we left off? I don't know why I'm frightened. I know my way around here. The cardboard trees, the painted seas, the sound here. But I'm not in any hurry. Will there ever be a moment why everything's as if we never said goodbye? A uh, bit of Patty Lupone for you there. It's just like she was in the room. Uh, fashionably late as ever, the Sinclairs from Newcastle. I need to lift up again, don't I? Otherwise you're chopping me head off. Hello, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Uh, how are you? Welcome back, Nick's Pop Quiz. Uh, Kat's here. Uh, who else we got? Amanda's here. Joe's here. Uh, JK here. The Tooting Tipplers are here. Uh, Maria Stanford. Yes, James as well. Dave Jones. Gillian Nichols is here from New Zealand. It's Tomorrowland calling. We love it. The music, says Texas. Helen McNair, Helen from Tutwirl. Uh, and Helen B team, Bronnies are back. Everybody is in. Well done, all for making it, for getting the memo. Um, you know, over a hundred of you. That's pretty good, isn't it? Um, cheers, everybody. Welcome back. Mmm. Mmm. That was a bit slurpy, wasn't it? Uh, well, hello, Will Simpson, the Oxford Trio. Hello, Nick from Toronto, Stuart. Well, wow. mmm. That's very nice. Uh, this is excellent. Nick, don't leave. Stay doing quizzes. We've missed you. That's very nice of you. Thank you very much. Um, well, welcome, everybody. Um, probably a lot of people that are used to being here. But welcome if you're new. This is Nick's Pub Quiz, where we will do 40 questions of general knowledge. We'll have a little break in the middle. Um, and uh, we mark them ourselves and just sort of hang out, test the grey matter for an hour and a bit, have a little drinky poo at half time. That's the general gist. Have you all been anyway? Um, it is really, really lovely to be back. Um, have maybe some of your younger relatives, family members, uh, friends received A-level results this week? If they have, well done. That's that little box ticked. Uh, congrats to my niece Zoe, who has done excellently well and is going to Nottingham University. Good job. Uh, so uh, that's good. Uh, Mark and Jules, Team Rainbow Nottingham are here good. Well, speaking of all of you who are here, um, Excuse me. Uh, I did put out on our Wicked Wednesday crew uh, Facebook page earlier. I know not everyone's on Facebook, but uh, we, uh, we exchange a bit there. Here are a few of the messages of today and around about where people have been. Uh, Cindy Rowland was commenting uh, in emojis. That was on my Facebook page. Uh, eyes down for a full house. She did that very cleverly. Uh, and, uh, and the Left Coast Rowlands will be taking part. Kiki and Toto are excited. Excited too. Thanks, Uncle Nick. Ah, Zoe's here. How lovely. Good. Um, and so then on the Wicked Wednesday group, uh, we had Colleen saying, Team Weeks will be joining forces with the Wheelers at their house tonight. Loki, the deaf dog, will be staying at home. Loki! She it can't hear me. Uh, Karen McWallach, if I've said that right. Um, I'll be FaceTiming the quiz from St. Louis uh, with my friends in Hazelmere in the UK. International Nick's Pub Quiz, as always. Uh, Alison Tullett, Team Carol Baskin will be just at home tonight, but there'll be an extra two team members, so we're hoping to do well. Uh, Alison's also looking forward to getting her dits out. Uh, well, don't wait on our account, Alison. Um, and if they're quite provocative dits, then do share them with us all. Um, Vanessa Viner, she's doing it from home, flying solo. Just as welcome as everybody else. That's what we're all about here at Nick's Pub Quiz. Uh, Team Rebel Nottingham, yes, Mark and Jules, I had that message down from you guys as well. Polly Burt says uh, they'll be joining in from Cornwall. Uh, they're in Perranporth. Lovely pictures of the waterfalls there, by the way. Enjoyed that very much. Uh, and, uh, and a shout out to Nicole and Chris, who found Pogalog, um, the, uh, the great, great grandfather, further father of one Hoglock. Now, Gay Goose is just hiding a little bit. He is here. We've got a big aloe vera plant now, sort of taking over, but, you know, they'll fit in. Um, Simon Calverley of Newton's Roadies, just a couple more of these. Uh, they had an early, early wedding anniversary lunch. Lovely. Um, the uh, Gavi de Gavi and the Sauterne, excellent. I do love a Sauterne. Who else likes a dessert wine? It sort of feels like the most stupidly posh thing ever, doesn't it? I, I do like a dessert wine. 
but I do. Uh, Edmund's made it back from cricket training. That's good. Let me just check in on a few more of you. Uh, June, hello from June's Loons in Virginia, USA. Yeah, I forgot to shut the door in there. Uh, and cheers from Mete and Darren and Jens in Tooting. We'll come on to the Wagstaffs in a bit. Um, Liz, so glad to have this tonight. Needed some company from lovely quizzes. Well, we are here with you, Liz. Uh, Chrissy visiting my mate Buffy in Grimsby. Left hubby in Colchester. Say hello to them. Love, love Chrissy. Live Chrissy. Doug and Sue. Sue's, I got your little message early. Thank you very much for that. Lee, so happy to be back. First time quizzing in the same room as my mum and dad. Angie and Caroline as they were shielding all of last year. That's great. Well, I guess that's still what's going on, isn't it? Um, and uh, my beautiful assistant, Caroline, is in the room, ladies and gentlemen. There she is. Posting away, she's posted up the Facebook group for any of you that are on that. Um, so uh, cheers to my beautiful assistant, Caroline, and to other beautiful assistant. You may see his hand a little later. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, right, then Team JK, who we know are here, um, they've also been fine dining, as well as the uh, Newton's Roadies pair, um, and fine drinking, um, I think. Uh, they were back in their local at five o'clock this afternoon, drinking frozen margaritas after a boozy lunch. So if you see them, do pick them up and help them home, won't you? Um, so, uh, so there we are. Now, uh, what's, gonna, what's gonna occur? Well, I've got 40 questions written here. I know, it's like I'm prepared and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll do 40 questions. You will write your neat team name, Neme Tame, sure, that too, uh, at the top of your sheet. There we go, Kate Lushes. She's full of it, she really is. Um, and uh, and then, we'll, then we'll quiz. So pop your team name at the top, as always. Um, we'll mark the first 20 in the middle. We'll have a little drinkable. Uh, then we'll do the second 20. Um, but uh, yes, let me just make sure that I have said, I mean, I think I did, but hello, Wicked Wednesday crew. Cheers, everybody. It is splendid to be back with you. And uh, mm. Caroline's popping the contributions to your host link up. There is another link that you will see and that Caroline will share. Uh, thank you, Alec, for the top chat contribution. Um, related to uh, Jens, uh, and uh, we'll explain more of that come the second half, but um, don't be too generous with me because we might need the next pub quiz crew to come through second half with a few little donations. More on that when we get there, but I've given you fair warning. It's very kind of you to donate to me, feel free but uh, I might want you to share some of that generosity uh, with, uh, with a little second half. So we'll get to that. Um, hello to the Saucy Saturdayers, because you are, you're all still there. I know you are. Some of you will have joined us tonight. Mm. So there we are. Cheers, everybody. Um, OK, what have I been up to? Well, working a lot. The world's longest rugby season just ended with the Lions Tour in South Africa. I was fortunate enough to be working with the Talk Sport uh, radio, so that was cool. Um, and I also seem to be the voice of Saturday Night ITV show, The Void. <laughs> How did that happen? No. Uh, through all those silly videos I did last year, clearly. Um, but that is, uh, is quite mad, isn't it? Um, so, uh, so there we are. I hope some of you have tuned in. Maybe your kids have tuned in. I think it's certainly proving popular with the uh, slightly younger generation who enjoy an inane idiot shouting over people, falling over and hurting themselves. Um, so good, Starbright. Glad you are loving The Void. ITV, Saturday night, 8 o'clock, sometimes 7.30. They also play it again on a Sunday morning. So for the hangover, hangover crew amongst you, get into the void. Uh, right, we're nearly ready to go, I think. Um, so um, one thing I must say that uh, is we write the answers down on, on paper here. We just do it with pen and paper or on your phone or whatever. Um, we don't pop the answers in the chat. Um, and we have a little song about that. Don't put your answers in the chat or you're a bit of a twat It's Nick's Pub Quiz! Yes, that's right. Uh, and of course, that is a very important thing to note. Um, I'd also like to appreciate uh, Julianne, uh, who spotted an opportunity uh, to share this with us, uh, which is where Julianne said, must have put the answers in the chat because she saw this picture. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Uh, now then, uh, Emily was asking a question I was going to answer. Is the t-shirt for sale anyway? Yes, it is. And what I've done, what I've done is I've just, I've knocked a few percent off the price. At least I tried to before the quiz started. Um, there's a Redbubble link, which Caroline will share. So if you were after some stash, particularly, may I say, if you're coming to Nick's Pub Quiz Live, um, because that is happening. Um, I've not seen you all since that all went on sale and sold out 
like the first batch of tickets sold out within a couple of hours. And then when I put the rest on, it sold out within an hour. It was all within about a day and a half. Absolutely bonkers. Thank you so much. I'm going to get to meet all of you lovely people, or some of you lovely people. Um, when we do this live in Balham in South London, I appreciate many of you overseas are not going to be able to make it. Some from overseas may, but I'm going to just keep that on the down low until the night. Um, but uh, you know who you are. Uh, but uh, very excited about that. And fresh news, if you are local, wanting to make the journey, Caroline shared the link. We have 10 extra tickets going on sale right now. Oh yeah, right now. Uh, so uh, go and get them if you would like to join us because um, they've moved us from the ballroom bit down to the actual club room at the Bedford, which is a hugely historic place. Phil Jupitus, Lee Evans have played, they have a brilliant comedy night there twice a week. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, uh, who else? All the music as well, Ed Sheeran used to play there. It's a cool place. And Nick's Pub Quiz is joining that little bit of history. But yeah, if you want to come and join us, there are 10 tickets left. So um, snap them up, please. Thank you, please and thank you. Right, um, should we do a little Nick's Pub Quiz selfie? It's been ages, hasn't it? Can you remember how this works? I hope so, can I? Uh, right. We'll get underway shortly, all of you going, when does this actual quiz start? <laughs> None of you are thinking that. Uh, anyway, let us now do the, oh, yeah, saw Ed Burn there a few years back, excellent. Um, let us now do the Nick's Pub Quiz selfie where you're gonna put it on some form of social media, your Instagrams, your Twitters and Facebooks, and you're gonna hashtag Nick's Pub Quiz. Uh, so let us, have a summer sizzle of a quiz tonight and our selfie. Here we go. You'll pose, won't you, with your phone with me behind you so that it all works. Ready? I'm joining you in three, two, one. Did we get it? I hope we got it. Good. Well done, everybody. Mmm. Oh, it's nice to be back on the G&Ts with you lot. You know, when you're sinning together, it's fine, isn't it? Um, are we there? Can anyone tell me if there's any other bits of business I should have attended to in the intro? I think I've done it all, haven't I? Um, a few more bits and pieces of fun uh, throughout, but uh, I think it's time to say, eyes down for a full house, let's play Nick's Pub Quiz! wait to see a whole room of people doing that. That's going to be magic and you will all do it. Um, but if you're there and you want a t-shirt, that's the link. The music says Texas. Good. Right. Question number one. Team names at the top, all that. Yeah, good. We'll, we'll actually do the quiz now, I know. Uh, quiz question number one. What is the capital? Mm, we're back here. What is the capital of Latvia? What's the capital of Latvia? Question number one. Do 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 do. Indeed, Gav McGee. Hmm. I did my back in yesterday. It's eased off, but if you see me wriggling around more than normal, n normal, then it's just because I'm making sure I'm not in any acne. Maybe I, if I sit back here, and bring you in a bit, can't I? Look. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I forgot there's a quiz, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. Question two then. Question one, the capital of Latvia. Question two, what is the English equivalent for the item that Americans would call a thumbtack? Hmm. Question two, what's the English equivalent for the item that Americans would call a thumbtack? Yes, if in doubt, just shout Oslo, obviously. Oh, the amount of little Oslo and Narnia and different spots there's been <laughs> over the last few months. People shoving them on that Facebook page. Yep, saying this. Uh, it's a unique club we have here for that little insight. Uh, that was question two. What is the English equivalent for the item that Americans would call a thumbtack? Question three. In 2010... In 2010, the artist Ai Weiwei, I'll spell that in a minute, uh, covered the floor of the Tate Modern's turbine hall with porcelain replicas of what? Was it sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, or caraway seeds? <laughs> yeah, there's one for you. Uh, so in 2010, the artist Ai Weiwei, spelt A-I, 
the I, A, I, anyway, A, I, I, Wei Wei, spelt W E I, W E I. So the artist Ai Wei, it sounds like a Geordie name, doesn't it? Ai Wei Wei, uh, covered the floor of the Tate Modern's turbine hall with porcelain replicas of what? Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, or caraway seeds? Had a couple of funny moments over the last few months. I was doing a press conference uh, ahead of the Lions and their attack coach is the Scottish head coach, Graham, uh, Gre Gregor Townsend. Um, and just as uh, I sort of put my virtual hand up to ask a question, Gregor went, oh, Nick, I just wanted to say I really enjoyed all the videos last year. I was like, oh, good. Scotland's head coach uh, is well aware of all that. Um, and then recently I met Dean Richards, who is the eminent director of rugby at Newcastle Falcons. And he was telling me that he's been regularly doing Nick's pub quiz with his mates. So very welcome. You know, all the glitterati. Uh, Kate says, can you please wish a happy 14th wedding, wedding anniversary to my husband, Neil? Enjoying the quiz now with a bottle of bubbly. Hooray! Got another birthday to mention coming up soon, but uh, we'll do that in a bit. So that was question three. Uh, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, or caraway seeds, ultimately. Well done, Caroline. Uh, question four. Which novel from Richard Adams starts with the words, the primroses were over? I mean, name a Richard Adams novel. Uh, which again may not be the easiest. There's a couple of stinkers here, but it, it gets easier. Uh, question four, which novel from Richard Adams starts with the words, the primroses were over? Hmm. That's question four on your mid-August Nick's pub quiz. Yeah, we are. Over 200 of you now, that's lovely. Welcome back, team. It's been really lovely to see actually people replying uh, to the email or Twitter or on the Facebook page or group, whatever, all these channels we have, um, saying how much they've been looking forward to tonight. Um, some people say, it's going to be lovely to just get back with some old mates and the chat and all of that. So cheers, everybody. Proper cool, that. OK, question five. Drinks theme here. Uh, what does IPA stand for? What does IPA stand for? Chris Catchpole, very good point. Interrupter, which, which, which Richard Adams novel? <laughs> yeah. The film, absolutely terrifying though. Still, I've got the image of, you know, yeah. Francie Pants is so screwed this evening. Oh dear, because you're a pants down, aren't you? You've your pants down. Yeah. Uh, Boo's question nailed. Kerry, this is my first Nick's pub quiz without long COVID symptoms. Was hoping, my was hoping my score might improve as I was feeling better. That was optimistic. Well, I'm glad the long COVID seems to have finally stopped being so blimmin' long. Um, there we are. How are we going to live chat live, though? Well, working on that, I think there's going to there's gonna have to be at Nick's pub quiz live. We are going to stream it, so you will be part of the evening. Uh, but I think there will inevitably have to be a certain focus in the room, but I will obviously be aware that you guys are there. Will I have the chat next to me to be TBC? I'd like to, because that's so much of what this is about. But hopefully if you're there and I'm not able to interact with you directly via the chat, you can enjoy the interaction we'll be having in the room as a very welcome guest via the stream. That's just how I think that's gonna work for now. But maybe if I can get a little monitor, then I'll be able to see you and we'll do it all together, but we'll do our best. So that was question five, what does IPA stand for? Uh, question six, what star sign would someone born on August the 11th be? That's question six, what star sign would someone born on August the 11th be? <laughs> Rob, I'm proper I'm <coughs> oh, That's good, good work for a Wednesday. Janice, please say happy belated 50th to Julie from the Cumbernoddies. We're all together tonight for the quiz with Ewan and Fiona and the four dogs. Photo might follow. Drinky poo's dependent. Well, if there are four dogs there, there'd better be a photo. Zoe Peters, live chat whiteboard in the room. How does that work, Zoe? What, you're going to write stuff on it? <laughs> oh, you mean people go up in the room and... Is that what you mean? I mean, the people on the... You can explain that to me. I like it, though. Maybe you can help run it. Um, right, question six that was, what star sign would someone born on August the 11th be? Question seven, what nut is found in the middle of a Ferrero Rocher? 
That is, what nut is found in the middle of a Ferrero Rocher? Run up and write on it. That's a hilarious concept. <laughs> Question seven. What nut is found in the middle of a Ferrero Rocher? Um, I'm an ambassador for the Harlequins Foundation, I'm very humbled to say, uh, and uh, for the women's, uh, what was I going to say, the Women's Sports Alliance. Um, so I'm a double ambassador, but I've not been invited to, to or I've not held any reception things. Um, so, uh, so, you know, I'm obviously not keeping up my, my role. Uh, question seven is really spoiling you. Uh, okay, question eight. Which TV series had the characters Edina, Patsy and Bubble? Which TV series had the characters Edina, Patsy and Bubble? Sue says it's a happy 90th birthday to her dad today. Fantastic. It was my dad's 79th recently. He started to get in denial because I don't think he likes the look of the next one beginning with eight. So I've suggested to him that we just reset it to one beginning with seven and he can just stay in his 70s. It'll be fine. The ambassador's receptions. Uh... <laughs> was that advert in... The States, was it just one of those generically filmed one and probably a voiceover was put on it across the world or was it just uniquely British? Uh, anyway. Ferrero Rocher advert, anyone not in the UK? Was it about ambassadors, big tray? Tri anyway. Uh, that was question eight. Question nine. Going a little bit 11 plus maths on you here. Uh, what comes next in this sequence of numbers? So write these down and you're going to want the next one. One, one, two, three, five. Okay, do this again. What comes next in this sequence of numbers? One, one, two, three, five. What's the next one there? That's question number nine. What is the next one there? Uh, Harris, Lennon, can you pay attention, please? Come on. They need your help here. Benedict needs your help. Style it after the French method, 70, 10, 70, 11. That's a great idea. I'll tell him that, that's good. Uh, Chrissy, like a wobbly blue whale. That is from a fantastic artist in uh, California. Smokes a lot of weed, but makes some excellent art. Uh, uh, Julie, I started to do my family tree during lockdown and are possibly yet to confirm it. Related to C.S. Lewis, a Narnia collection from an audience member. At oh my God. June, regarding ageing, I adopted the practice of starting over at 50. That's I'm now 18. Lovely. We like that. Wesbro. Thank you, Tom. Yes. I just called him a stonehead from California. That's nice of me, isn't it? Wesbro Art. He is on uh, Insta, I think does some awesome stuff. We've got another one on the wall up there called Round, Around the Bend. Because we did that tossery, we're on holiday, we love that art, can we get a copy shipped to us in London? Yeah, we did. Uh, that was question nine. Question ten. Uh, what sport do the Green Bay Packers play? What sport do the Green Bay Packers play? No doubt, very easy for people uh, on that side of the pond. Maybe not. But what sport do the Green Bay Packers play? It's question 10. Two very special birthday shout outs today. Uh, one is 13 and the other is not. Uh, it's a happy birthday to Amber, the uh, beautiful assistant's family dog, who's 13 today. Isn't that lovely? Uh, and also, Oh, to my beautiful assistant's dad, Jeff. Happy birthday, Jeff. Everybody ready to sing happy birthday to Jeff? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You better be joining in. Happy birthday, Jeff. Jeff. 
Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jeff. He's a geoff. He is a geoff. Yes. Uh, good. I think Tom told me a story once of someone phoning their family house who had written, had it written down and was just like, hello, can I speak to geoff hall? Or maybe it was work. I love that. Uh, right. Uh, happy birthday, Jeff. Right. On to question 11. Uh, <laughs> the happy birthday music, says Texas. Uh, OK, question 11, 12 and 13. We're revisiting the spelling bee. Yeah, we are. Spelling bee time. So your first one uh, for 11. You're just going to spell these words and we will check them. But obviously I can't be too detailed reading them out. So question 11. The word I want you to spell is colossal. Colossal. Uh, question 12. The word will be idiosyncratic. <laughs> and 13 will be recommend. James's dad's a gee off as well. Uh, oh, I've seen a note come through on Instagram that apparently the ambassador of, uh, from Ferrero Rocher could be seen on French TV as well. Mmm. Thank you, cheap potato girl. Uh, right. Spelling B. Question 11, colossal. Question 12, idiosyncratic. Question 13, recommend. Claire Varga wanting to know if we'll be over by nine o'clock for the hideously toxic Love Island. I couldn't care less. Sorry. <laughs> Not my thing. A load of idiots behaving like children and being horrible to each other. No, I'm all right for that, thanks. Uh, you do you. Yes. Uh, so spelling bees one more time. 11 colossal, 12 idiosyncratic, 13 recommend. Um, 14 then, uh, because the, uh, the spelling bees are, uh, are done by my beautiful assistant. Um, and uh, he, uh, he also then does the what happened next. So are we ready for the what happened next question number 14? I see a few people with me on Love Island there. Um, it's fine. If you like it, watch telly you like. It's fine. It's just not my back. Uh, question 14 then. Uh, yeah, what happened next? Here we go then. Uh, in the recent Tokyo Olympics men's high jump, Italy's Gianmarco Tamberi and Mutaz Barshim of Qatar were locked in first place after a few hours of competing. The two athletes were then given the option to settle matters with a jump off. What happened next? So, in the recent Tokyo Olympic men's high jump, Italy, Gian, Italy's Gianmarco Tamberi and Mutaz Barshim of Qatar were locked in first place after a tough few hours of competing. The two athletes were then given the option to settle matters with a jump off. What happened next? Here we go. Doug and Sousa finally remember the capital of Latvia. Whee! <laughs> well done. Well done. So that's your what happened next. Just a general gist. Ah, Fionca, we knew that would be a quiz question one day, but not that quickly. Well, I like to be fairly topical. But that was my beautiful assistant's work there. We did a little cry at that moment. So did I. I was gently hung over on the sofa and yes, I was moist of eye. Uh, okay. Question 15. The avocado dip guacamole is associated with which country? Libby. Hello, we've been here since episode one but never really posted in the chat. Well, Libby. <laughs> it wasn't that hard, was it? Thanks very much for saying hi. Glad you've been with us all the way. You're very welcome. Uh, so the avocado dip guacamole question 15 is associated with which country? Look at this, 200 of you, back with us. Thank you. So lovely. By the way, don't tell anyone, I am going to meet the Tooting Tipplers after this for a little tipple in Tooting. For a tipple in Tooting, David. We've really got into Schitt's Creek. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, Guacamala. Oh, Stuart, that is first rate. Take the rest of the week off. Uh, OK, question 16. Uh, founded as Albrecht Discount, 
What is this company now known as? That's question 16, and you can, you don't need any other fact, you can do this yourself, trust me, if you don't know. Uh, founded as Albrecht Discount, what is the company now known as? Oh, Sinclair's genuinely emotional about you being back doing this. Thank you. It's really lovely to be back. I mean, it felt like we needed to kind of hammock a session in. I felt it had been a little while. Uh, but also, I sort of thought, well, let's just get back in the swing so that we've got half an idea of what happens at the live one. Me, so that I can remember how this works. <laughs> um, so a couple of weeks, we'll do the live one. There'll be people in the room. It'll be bananas. You'll all know me really well by my face and you'll be talking to me like we've known each other for years, but you won't have a name badge. Wear name badges. Uh, and yeah, that'll be funny. Tippling and tooting with the tooting tipplers. You say it, James. You're the one who's been drinking all afternoon. Uh, that's question 16. Founded as Albrecht Discount. What's the company now known as? Question 17. And now for something completely different. Is a regular quote from which comedy show? That wasn't me just talking um, for a change. Uh, that's question 17. And now for something completely different. Is a regular quote from which comedy show? Carol and David, we're gutted we can't come to the live show. Will you be doing some more? Well, let's see how it goes, basically. Um, it's a, well, yeah, why not? I mean, I, my, my sense is, yes, let's try and do it. Um, and if it goes well, and then if the venue are cool, then maybe I start to look at their Christmassy diary. Let me see what happens there. Weekends are probably going to be pushed there, but maybe we see if they've got a Wednesday evening, possibly. Appreciate from those coming further afield, that's less easy, but let's, let's see what we can do. Watch this space on that front. Uh, all the gins at the bottom of that. Can you take it on the road to France, maybe? Well, maybe. How could it go badly, says Rob. Is that based on how bad this generally is? Is that a sort of backhanded compliment? Good. Uh, that was question 17. Question 18. If your Gen Z younger relative or friend was, was to send you an emoji of a skull in reaction to a funny, funny remark or a tickety talk, one of those, um, what would they be saying? What would they mean by that? And yes, beautiful assistant Tom, that's just from our conversation earlier. Sad we missed out on live show too. Was busy sorting babysitter and missed out on tickets. Is that tonight? Of the 10 already gone? Someone can tell me, because I can't tell. We had a 10 extra tickets on sale tonight. So if they've gone for our show on the 29th, uh, then, then sorry you missed it. Uh, so that was question 18. I'll repeat 16 for you, Karen, in just a sec. Uh, question 18, if your younger relative, your Gen Zer, uh, your friend, yes, as Carolina says, um, was to send you an emoji of a skull in reaction to a funny remark or TikTok, what would they be saying? What would they mean? Tickets have gone, have they? Gosh, well, isn't that unbelievable? Thank you to those who snapped that up. Uh, Karen wanted question 16. Uh, founded as Albrecht Discount, what is the company now known as? What is the company now known as? That was question 16. Boozak saying, I feel like I need to be cool to know the answer to 18, and I'm not cool. Well, let's just say that my beautiful assistant Tom had an education earlier, and I'll try and relay what I was told, but we're still learning. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. Uh, that was 18. Question 19. Footballer Lionel Messi has left Barcelona and signed for which other football club? That's footballer Lionel Messi has left Barcelona and signed for which other football club? And it's been wall-to-wall -wall coverage and there've been a lot of people, I got this from Tom earlier as well, it really made me laugh. He was just like, so all this coverage, like, oh, and what a wrench it must be, and he's left that club, he's got, it's basically the equivalent of just going, oh, he's gone to a new school, he's gonna have to make all these new friends, isn't he? Yeah, while well, he's being paid about 300 grand a week, a day, probably. Get a grip. <clears throat> anyway, footballer, Lionel Messi, uh, has left Barcelona and signed for which other football club? 
If only it was Accrington Stanley, that would be great. So, next pub quiz, UK tour with tour t-shirt merch. It's got to happen. Yeah, I mean, basically in pubs though, right? Nick, I thought Gen Z was married to Beyonce. <laughs> that's not how I've... That's the one I meant. Uh, <laughs> very good. Two and a half million a month, is it, James? Poor guy, yeah. It's going to be so hard for him. Question 20, we've got there. Question 20, the end of our first half is coming into view. Question 20, uh, what is the Sunday before Easter Sunday known as? What's the Sunday before Easter Sunday known as? Very good, Benedict. Accrington Stanley, who are they exactly? That's a very niche ad campaign in the UK as well. For milk, for those of you unaware. Good one, though. So that was question 20. What is the Sunday before Easter Sunday known as? Good? There? Yeah? Shall I stop talking like this? Those are your first 20 questions on our little August revisit of Nick's Pub Quiz! <laughs> Yes, make sure your team name is at the top as you swap the answer sheet with yourself. Um, and, uh, and we can go through the answers on that first half. The first 20 questions, music, ba da ba ba da bam Yes, quite, and all of the above. Uh, and, uh, and I can also tell you a little bit more about our other donation link in just a second. Uh, so, uh, should we do the answers for that first half? Okay, let us get on with it then. The capital of Latvia, question one was, is, Riga. Riga. I went there on a stag do. Oh, we had fun. Uh, we were guided around by a member of the ex-KGB for our safety. Uh, and we got so drunk, we needed that safety. Uh, so question one, Riga, the answer. Question two, the English equivalent for the item that Americans would call a thumbtack is a drawing pin. A drawing pin is a thumbtack. Good. Question three. Uh, the artist Ai Weiwei, I may be saying that wrong, probably am, uh, covered the floor of the Tate Modern in sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds, yes. Not pumpkin or caraway. Sunflower was the answer we wanted there. Art. Uh, four. The novel from Richard Adams, starting with the words, the primroses were over. I couldn't name you another Richard Adams novel, but I could name you Watership Down. Watership Down and those... Bunnies with the myxomatosis in the animated film, some of the most terrifying childhood memories I have. Um, question five, uh, what does IPA stand for? IPA stands for Indian Pale Ale, of course it does. Uh, Indian Pale Ale, the answer to question five. Question six, what star sign would someone born on August the 11th be? They'd be a Leo. A Leo is an August the 11th star sign. Well done if you got that. Uh, of course, to Jeff and to Amber and to everyone whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday. Cheers. Mm. Mm. What nut's found in the middle of a Ferrero Rocher? It's a hazelnut. Hazelnut is in the middle of a Ferrero Rocher. Uh, then, uh, what TV series? Question eight. How the characters of Edina, Patsy and Bubble it was, of course. Absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous, the answer to question eight. Question nine, uh, what comes next in the sequence of, num sequence of numbers? One, one, two, three, five, eight, because each pair is adding up to the next one. So one and one is two, one and two is three, two and three is five, three and five is eight. Good? Hopefully not too tricky, that one. Eight, the answer to question nine. Question 10, what sport do the Green Bay Packers play? It is NFL, American football. Uh, indeed, uh, hopefully most of you got that. Um, now then, that was question 10, American football, NFL. Uh, question 11, we're into our spelling bees. So this was the first one. Are we ready? Colossal was the word I asked you to spell. Is it double L's, is it double S's? Well, here we go. C O L. O double S A L. Probably the easiest of the three for this one. Um, C O L O double S A L. Colossal. That's question 11. Well done if you spelt it right. Uh, 12, the next one was idiosyncratic. Um, 
sort of one that if you break it down, you should get there. So idio, I-D-I-O, idio, syncratic, S-Y-N-C-R-A-T-I-C. Uh, idiosyncratic. One more time. I-D-I-O-S-Y-N-C-R-A-T-I-C. Idiosyncratic. And then 13. Recommend. Recommend. It is one C and two M's. So R-E-C-O-M-M-E-N-D. Point for each of those. Well done. Uh, question 14. Uh, what happened next? Uh, I enjoyed this. Uh, the, uh, the high jump between Italy's Gianmarco Tamberi and Mutaz Barshim of Qatar. Uh, they were asked if they wanted to go into a jump off because they were all level. Uh, and at that level, at that type of competition, uh, well, what happened next? The uh, Mutaz Barshim asked the official, have you got two golds? Oh, yeah. And they shared the gold. So if you've got something along those lines about the fact that they shared the gold medal, that they asked if they could have two gold medals, um, and the resultant joy uh, on uh, Tamberi's face was absolutely delightful. It was very, very good. Uh, so uh, tear to the eye for all of us. Uh, pushpin. I've never heard of the word pushpin. Uh, but if that's what you... I mean, I did say... What is it? Is it with the UK... The English equivalent? And I don't know, push pin? I've never heard of it. Drawing pin, I've, anyway. Ah, you imagine it yourself, you'll do what you want. Uh, right, that was question 14. Question 15, guacamole, Mexico. Mexico, of course, uh, the answer we wanted there, the country associated with guacamole. Now then, question 16, founded as Albrecht Discount. We'll take the first two letters of Albrecht and the first two letters of Discount, and you've got Aldi. Aldi, Albrecht Discount. I didn't know that till earlier either. Uh, so that's the question to see, the answer to question 16 is Aldi. Question 17, and now for something completely different. That is a regular quote from Monty Python. Back in the day, the fabulous Monty Python. Uh, the answer to question 17. Question 18, uh, the use of the emoji, the skull, uh, means I am dead. I am and generally, I'm dead from laughing so much. Oh, I died. Um, but uh, yeah, Tom was listening to the radio earlier. They were discussing this with people that were saying, basically, all of us are my age, everyone, all of us, basically, those of us that aren't the youth of today are all using emojis in a way that's entirely different to what they do. So, for example, the more naturally extreme, of like a really laughing emoji, where we genuinely think something's been very funny, is seen by the younger generation as entirely sarcastic. Uh, so it's just like, oh, yeah, I'm funny. Um, but if it's genuinely funny, then it's like a skull. I'm dead from laughing so much. Uh, that thing. Apparently a couple of thumbs up rather than being like double. Yeah, yeah, I'm really keen. It's just, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's just adds, it's all dry and sarcastic. Basically, think you're a teenager and that's how you interpret it all. Um, so apparently... I'm looking forward to more conversations with my nearest and dearest to learn about what I don't clearly know anything about. Uh, but there we are. Uh, 19, footballer Lionel Messi has gone to PSG. PSG is where he is, and we're all very sympathetic to him. Uh, question 20. Um, oh, Stuart said Monty Python's Flying Circus in full, I think. All right, Stuart, Monty Python's fine for me. Uh, question 20, what is the Sunday before Easter Sunday known as it is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the one before Easter Sunday. PSG Paris Saint-Germain. Yes, if you put either of those answers, I'm absolutely fine with it. Those are your answers for the first album next pub quiz. Oh, let's see the scores then. Yes, we've got some big 20s coming in, haven't we? From the Tooting Tipplers, I think, and Amanda. Helen, 18, OMG, my best ever. Uh, Joe, Emma's best ever star, 18 out of 20. Uh, the Sinclairs from Newcastle, they're very happy 16. 19 out of 20 for Zoe and Mum. Uh, good, 19 out of 20 for Dave, back in the groove. Uh, is that the name of the sequel to your fil first film? Uh, Goddens of Harrogate with a 16. Team Rainbow Nottingham with a 16 as well. 18 for the Home Aloneers. Home Aloneers. 19 for Gillian. Uh, Joe Goscombe with 20. 18 out of 20 for Carol Baskin. The O'Gradiators. Hello Pam with 18. 19 out of 20 for Mimi, for me, Mum and Grunkle David. Good work, Caroline. Uh, Mark, 17. Dennis, 20. Gav McGee, 19. Starbright, one of our best at 
15. Kate Kremin Williams with a 20. Alec with a 20. First time ever. Good. Uh, Jeff Mitchell, 20. Wow. Uh, 15 for Team Hell's Kitchen. 20 out of 20. A miracle. Uh, 19 and a half for Julie. 20 for Sue Spanton. 18. Not a bad. Not bad for a solo effort. Francie Pants. Up 19. Must be the Vino. Well, maybe. Cumbernoddy's 19. Uh, Carol and David, 18. We're chuffed. Good. Uh, solid. 16 out of 20 for Summer Sozzled, Team JK. Yes, it's a Summer Sizzler. Get Summer Sozzled. Um, 20 full house thanks to insider emoji knowledge from Gen Z daughter. Uh, Maria, 19, didn't get the A way way, even though we have his book on our coffee table. Excellent work. Uh, 15 for us as well, excuse me. Uh, then 20 for the Laskovskis, 20 for Wilson Servants, um, a beautiful assistant's just been squirted in the face by a lime, uh, 18 for the dog eggs, uh, 19 out of 20, we thought it was the two Ronnies, not Monty Python, ah yeah, 20 out of 20 for Marty Silver, so a lot of you have aced that first half by the sounds of things, so uh, very well done. Now, um, it's time to make your uh, Cuban sidecar. Um, is that what we could st start with it as the name in the end? Yes, just checking. Because um, the email went out uh, yesterday for, uh, for you to uh, get yourself some light rum um, and a little bit of almond essence if you were feeling, feeling it. Um, almond, sorry, extract. And Quantro, yes, good. Um, Boozak says squirted in the face, Tom. Unfortunate. Um, his parents are on here, Laura, do you mind? Um, so, uh, a little bit about what's happening next, right? While my beautiful assistant prepares the second half cocktail, our Cuban sidecar. Anyone joining us with the Cuban? Hmm. So, um, the first, we've got a couple of minutes, but I'll just clue you in here, right? The, uh, the first 10 questions of the second half have been provided by this edition's guest questioner, Jens Wagstaff. And Jens Wagstaff is a 15-year-old student from Tooting, local. Uh, good man, Jens. Um, he's doing his Duke of Edinburgh Silver Award. Now, some of you internationally may not know a Duke of Edinburgh Award. It's basically, it involves bits of um, potentially charity work, going out and doing some outward bound stuff, uh, volunteering. It's, uh, it's a sort of thing that you do, uh, you devote a certain number of hours and you get to a sort of gold, bronze or silver, that's an interesting order, uh, award, but um, it's cool. It's, it's a good thing that a lot of people do um, and elements of it require you to do certain things community-wise as well. Um, and I got a lovely message from Meta, uh, who is Jens's mum, saying Jens was gonna do a charity quiz but wondered about submitting some questions to you and whether we could do some fundraising together. And I thought, for a local chap, Let's do that. Um, so, uh, Jens is raising money for the RSPCA, who most people, I'm assuming, will know, uh, but uh, they are uh, they're raising awareness and support um, for the RSPCA as the largest animal welfare charity in the UK. Um, they have been going for years. Uh, their mission is to ensure animals have a good life by rescuing and caring for those in need. Um, and Jens is supporting the Croydon Crystal Palace District branch and has been volunteering at their shop there. Um, and all of this has come about because... <laughs> This is where we love it even more. Uh, him and his family got their first dog, a black lab called Buster, uh, about a year ago. And having seen the picture of Buster on the Just Giving page, I really want to cuddle. I appreciate he's probably a bit bigger now. Um, so uh, there is a Just Giving link, which is via the bit.ly, which Caroline will share a couple of times once we restart. Um, and Jens's target is 150 pounds, or at least it was, and it was, there was only about a tenner in it earlier. There we are, there's the, uh, the link. Um, so Nick's Pub Quiz Crew, do your thing. Let's help Jens out because he's, uh, he's the architect of the next 10 questions. No problem, Darren. Um, and we'll see how we do. We'll see how we do. We'll see if we can help. Uh, it's already now 160, says Caroline. <laughs> well, we've smashed the target then. Uh, maybe it was already higher before we got stuck into it. Or maybe all of you have been doing that work already. Um, so uh, very generous of you. Right, I think the beautiful assistant needs a moment. The beautiful sound that is. Uh, good. That'll, that'll be along in a moment. Um, what a delight. Uh, so uh, thank you all in advance for your generosity. Anything you can spare. 
Um, there's 200 of us on here, a pound or two each, and he's smashed that, hasn't he? So uh, if you can, follow that target and donate via Just Giving. Um, and uh, yeah, it, uh, it would be brilliant to send a few quid to the RSPCA who do such fantastic work and uh, do quite a good job of taking dogs off wrong uns who've had them and are doing nasty things. You see them walking them and you go, they shouldn't have that dog, um, which winds me up. It's upsetting sometimes, but they do good stuff. So, well done, Jens. Thank you for your questions. I'm going to share them with people um, now, I think. Um, so uh, I'm just going to finish this because I might have another drink coming in a minute. Ooh. Ooh. Cheers, everybody. One down the hatch. Um, and I think we're nearly ready for the second half too. Crack on, let's play the second half of your mid-August Knicks pub quiz. Yes, the second half music. Uh, okay, only one, what, only one what? The second, yeah, I don't know. Uh, keep the donations coming in. Thank you for joining in. That's, uh, that's Jens uh, talking to us direct there from the chat. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I know you've waited a while. Say good evening to Tom, everybody. Yeah, there he is. Uh, you heard him clattering about and getting lime squirted in his eye and mixing up a very delicious Cuban sidecar. Is anyone else joining in? Um, because here it comes. Made it look very pretty in this pretty little glass. Ah, oh, cheers, Tom, says Texas. Everyone's saying hi. Let me take that delicately. Thank you very much. Cuban sidecar, eh? I mean, where did this come from? But trite, my first time, hi. Don't know why she felt the need. He, she, hmm. Oh, yes. That's excellent. It's sort of daiquiri-esque, a cube. I mean, it's got that rum base. Um, well, uh, say well done to Tom, everybody, for that lovely cocktail. If you've got a Cuban sidecar, cheers to you as well. And, uh, and I hear that the fundraising is going off the hook. Um, we are up to 250 quid already. <laughs> well, we've added nearly 100 pounds in about five minutes. Well done. Mm. That's an absolute treat. Oh, yeah. Tooting tipplers, see you in a bit. Um, okay, we best crack on, shouldn't we? Sh shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? Hadn't we? Great. Should we do the thing again and do the second half? Why not? Huh. Question 21 then, to start our run of 10 questions from our guest contributor, Jens Wagstaff. Okay, here we go. Uh, what year was the RSPCA founded? Was it A, 1907, B, 1889, or C, 1824? That's our first guest question from Jens. What year was the RSPCA founded? A, 1907, B, 1889, or C, 1824? Who did I see joining me in a, on a sidecar? Nicola, excellent, good. No questions, no answers in the chat, please. No answers in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, question 22. Where do dogs have their sweat glands known as merocrine glands? Merocrine glands, it's where dogs have the majority of their sweat glands. Where are they? Where are they? It's question 22. Where do dogs have their sweat glands? known as merocrine glands. We'll let you off, try it, we'll let you off. Write them down on some paper, we'll go through the answers at the end, that's how it works. That was question 22. Question 23. Where do guinea pigs come from, originally? Not, don't say the pet shop. Where did guinea pigs originally come from? Uh, South America, South Asia, or South Africa? Bit of multiple choice for you there. Where did guinea pigs originally come from? South America, South Asia, or South Africa? Moderator Caroline's on the beat. Good to see. 
not just my assistant secretary, but also my authoritarian. A science lab. Stuart, guacamole again. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Johnston. Caroline, very good of you. Question 24. What was the most popular female dog name in the UK in 2020? This is uh, multiple choice as well. Uh, Rosie, Bella or Luna? So what was the most popular female dog name in the UK last year? Was it Rosie, Bella or Luna? We appear to be on our way to absolutely smashing this. We've already smashed it. 383 pounds now. <laughs> now, Wagstaffs, did you very intelligently set that at a level that you knew we'd excitedly smash to pieces? If, whether you did or not, if you did, excellent, you were right. We have taken absolute pride in that. Uh, we're already at about 300% of what you hope to raise. Uh, so good, well done. Um, here we go. Uh, wish I'd subbed on first which you subbed on first, you get, I can't remember what you said. Wish, kind of wish I subbed on first UK lockdown myself. Come on, anyway. Michael and Sue, Nick, you're a bit, dip, shush. It's you lot who are doing this. Uh, right, question 25. What is a male cat called? What is a male cat called? And I don't mean like Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a name, obviously, but <laughs> what's a male cat called? Dave. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Don't know why I've abused myself so much there. What's a male cat called? Question 25. Ours are called Kevin and Chicken. Those are good names. Uh, thanks, Dave. Meow. Um, the next five questions um, I have taken. Jens did write uh, quite a few more, but I've, I've trans translated them in uh, in this fashion so that we've sort of got some Ditloidy style uh, questions here. So these are all films with animals, but they're written in a Ditloidy style way, which, uh, which Jens did for us, which is excellent. Very next pub quiz. Uh, so, uh, five films coming to you that have animals in them, uh, and, uh, or at least an animal uh, as a part, major part. So, uh, go good luck with these. Um, 26, M and M. M and M. It's one of my favourite films. It makes me pull my eyes out. Yeah, good, film with an animal, M and M. What's the longer version of that? Hello, Rocky. Hello, handsome, just back from the holiday with the family. Shout out to Mother Clark and the rest of the Clark Sawyers. Hello, Clarkies. Hope you're all well. Uh, 27, your Dit Lloydy one for the next film that's got animals in it, L and the T. L and the T, animated one there. You've got that one, haven't you? L and the T. Went all a bit Mel Gibroich, didn't I? Yes, yes. Okay, gang, great. Uh, L and the T, 27 there. Need some more of this, I think. Uh, very nice. Just back from donating. Well done, Karen. Um, 28. This one's just F N. Animally basty. This one's animation as well. F N. Hmm. That's 28. All animal themed, these. 29. The S L of P. 29. The S L of P. Caroline, very quickly up behind me with that one. Uh, question 30, FW. 
Karen says, lovely drink, well done, Tom. It is good, isn't it? Yeah. Saw sort of quite a bit of pressure to come back with a decent cocktail and absolutely nailed it as far as I'm concerned. I was like, do something with pins, sort of summary, find something. Like, no, Cuban sidecar. Oh, okay. It's delicious, well done. Uh, so let's just double check those. The films with animals then, uh, Ditloidy style, 26 M and M, 27 L and the T, 28 F N, 29 the S L of P, and 30 F W. The sea lion of Peckham. Indeed, Joe. <laughs> I love it. Uh, canine knowledge very poor, says Martin, hoping that Nick getting his dits out saves Jen or fix it. Well, seeing as you've asked, I'm going to get my dits out now. We're at £437 for the RSPCA via Joe's questions. Uh, those were Joe's questions, I should also say. Um, so those were his 10. We'll go to the answers in a bit, and maybe by the time we get there, we'll see where our total is at. Um, but uh, well done, Jens. Lovely questions. Good, eh? Perfectly pitched, I thought. Uh, right, so uh, I'm going to get my dits out now. So uh, avert your eyes and listen up. Um, so my thanks to our Ditloid Queen, Kiara, um, and uh, she's given, given, given me both of these. Um, entirely different themes on these two, by the way. Uh, so here we go. Your Ditloids. If you're not aware of what a Ditloid is, how are you not? There's 200 of you here who've clearly heard it before. Uh, 18H on a GC would be 18 holes on a golf course. Uh, a phrase, an idiom, a thing. Uh, so we've got one of those here. This is, this is more of a fact as many of them are. Are you ready? Your first of two ditloids as part of question 31. 46S, excuse me, 46S in the S-O-G. 46S in the S-O-G. That is one of them. Got that one down? 46S in the S-O-G. Missed the sound of my dits, I know. And the feel of them too. Uh, and the second one, C has three U S. C has three U S. Okay. Good. Uh, so Ditloids, 46 S in the SOG, C has three U S. There we are. Caroline has got them on screen for those of you with the chat up. Um, one of them, Think about this recent time of year that we've all just enjoyed. Uh, and the other... Panto season. Okay. Good. Uh, all right, those are my Ditloids. They are well and truly out for your enjoyment. Um, okay, now then, it is time for our little foreign language round. Uh, well, Mrs. Johnston, I'm reliably told it's 46, but, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, fantastic generosity. Thank you, Darren. Don't forget to donate to our host. Oh, well, you're very kind, but uh, <laughs> like dogs, Nick Heath is for life, not just for Christmas. You're very good, Darren. Um, bah, donate to the RSPCA. I've had a good year. You're fine. <laughs> um, but thank you. Very, very kind. Right. Um, we've got five language ones now. And I thought, given our return, given how we're feeling, given bowling into Nick's pub quiz live, um, the word would be drink. <laughs> uh, so these are all the word drink and the languages are there for you as well. So uh, we have uh, Bebida, Nomu, Ol, Juoda and Maori. Uh, sorry, Inu written them around the wrong way. Uh, so uh, that's obviously me giving it away. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> we had to have one, didn't we? We nearly got that. I was so close to the end. Uh, anyway, uh, these are all the words and you've got to put these languages next to each of them. Try to read them without too much of a accent. I wouldn't know half the accents on them anyway. Uh, but you maybe had a clue there. If, if you missed it, you missed it. Uh, but there we are. So Irish, Maori, Japanese, Portuguese, Finnish are what all of these five words for drink are. And you're going to marry them up. 32, 33, 34, 35 and 36. A point for each. And obviously if you start to get it wrong, well then you've probably got them all wrong. But we shall see. The new Oslo moment, yeah, wasn't as good though, was it? Uh, so there we are. 
We'll leave these here for another few seconds. Irish, Maori, Japanese, Portuguese and Finnish. We are not far from the finish. Good. Okay, 10 seconds. Good. Okay, marvellous. They're going away now. Uh, so those are the five language ones for drink. Well done. Um, hopefully you've got at least one of them. <laughs> um, okay, now we are on to our music without the music to finish off. We've got three name the years and one lyric number to finish on. Um, it might be even one I've done before because... I couldn't be asked to check them. I've done so many of these. Anyway, uh, let's get to our name the years, first of all. They are from consecutive decades once again. So, name the year of release for the song Highway to Hell by ACDC. Highway to Hell, ACDC, uh, is number 37. Question 37, what year was that released? Highway to Hell, ACDC. Had a chat? Got an idea? We're very quiet then for a minute over here. 38, I'll give you the next two, shall I? 38, uh, The Sun Always Shines on TV by AHA. What year was that released? The Sun Always Shines on TV by AHA. AHA! More sidecar, please. Mmm. Question 38, the sun always shines on TV. Aha, what year of release? Question 39, shiny happy people, REM. These are all in consecutive decades, sug and doos. These are tricky, says Kate. Yeah, they might be, they might be. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aha was the first gig I ever went to. Oh, wow. That's cool. I bought their... I bought like their first two or three albums on cassette. I had Headlines and Deadlines, the hit, greatest hits as well. And then that was at around an era where I was quite embarrassed to be into it. And then recently in the car, because of Siri being connected to the phone or whatever, it's just suddenly going back in time and going, what were those albums and things I used to listen to when I was like 12, 11, 8 and uh, have been picking out, yeah, things like Play Me, Play Touchy by AHA. <laughs> Still great. Um, Ditloid clues again, sure. Uh, the uh, first one was something we've all enjoyed recently, or most people probably have. It's difficult not to, I think. Uh, and the second one was Panto Season. That's the clue for the second one. C has three US. Good. Uh, was there another repeat wanted back there? Uh, yes, they are successive decades. Yes, indeed. So Highway to Hell, ACDC for question 37. Sun Always Shines on TV by AHA uh, was 38. And 39 was Shiny Happy People by REM. What does panto mean? Pantomime. Pantomime. I realise that's a very British thing, isn't it? But um, what else could I say? Fairy tales? Simon, I've had my head shaved today and I went out at lunchtime in the sun, so I'm a shiny, happy person. Good. After your lovely lunch, I should hope so. Uh, all right, those are the name of years. And a final one to finish in the lyrics. Um, Starbright, what does Panto mean? That's my job. Well, it's, yeah, it's a very UK thing though, isn't it? Um, all right, lyrics. Here we are then. People dancing all in the street. See the rhythm all in their feet. Life is good, wild and sweet. Let the music play on. <laughs> I've never said those words like that before. Uh, people dancing all in the street. See the rhythm all in their feet. Life is good, wild and sweet. Let the music play on. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, Ringing Bells? It's a pretty well-known song, that, I would say. Good? Happy? Done? Because those are your second 20, your 40 next pub quiz questions. <laughs> Yes, that's right, indeed. Uh, we've had all the questions. Look, hasn't it flown? No, says someone. Uh, right, nearly quarter past nine. Good, that's our time local. We'd better get down the old lope, tooting tipplers. Um, right, let's go through the answers then. Uh, the 40 questions, music, says Texas. Um, the answers then for our second half. And... Uh, 21. Uh, what year was the RSPCA founded? Our questions from Jens. Uh, the answer you wanted was C, 1824. 1824 was the answer to 21. That was answer C in my multiple choice. Question 22. Where do dogs have their sweat glands, known as merocrine glands? It's in their paws. In their paws, indeed. Um, question 23. Where do guinea pigs originally come from? It's South America. South America is what you've got there. Question 24. What was the most popular female dog name in the UK in 2020? It was Bella. Bella, the most popular dog name. That was question 24. Question 25. What is a male cat called? Same name as my beautiful assistant. It's a Tom. A male cat is a Tom, not a Steve. Um, films with animals are semi-ditloids. They're very ditloidy, aren't they? Uh, from Jens, M&M, &M, Marley and Me. Well done if you got that. Marley and Me for question 26. Uh, 27, L and the T. Lady and the Tramp, and thinking spaghetti, that kiss. What an iconic moment that still is, isn't it? Um, question 28, FN, Finding Nemo. Did you get that? Hopefully you did. Uh, question 29, the SL of P, The Secret Life of Pets. Yes, I think I forced Tom to come with me to the cinema to see that, and we giggled our way through it. Uh, is it for kids? Yes. Is it about animals? Yes. We're going. Um, question 30, FW. Free Willy. Yes, Free Willy. Uh, thank you, Jens, for those questions. A brilliant effort. Um, and uh, Meta, just a brilliant idea for you guys to get in touch. And good luck with the D of E and the, uh, the silver award. I, I dare say we've put a few quid the RSPCA's way. Um, maybe my beautiful assistant, Caroline, can, can tell us what that, that final total for now is. Of course, anyone who's doing this quiz over the course of the next few days, which is what happens, that may go up by a bit as well. So if you are watching this belatedly, keep donating. £442. <laughs> Good. Well done, everybody. Target was 150. 300% of that is 450, is it? Yeah, have I done my maths there? Sure, something like that. Uh, well done, everybody. Anyway, that's fantastic. Um, absolutely brilliant. The power of the Nick's Pub Quiz crew. Good on you all. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you, Jens, uh, and, uh, and the whole family, the whole Wagstar family. Uh, cool. OK. Uh, and by the way, when's my cuddle with Buster? That's, my, that's the only part of the contract that you have yet to pay back. Come on. Uh, then we're on to the languages. Oh, no, the Ditloids. Sorry, Ditloids. Let me quickly get my dits out for you once more. Uh, 46S in the SOG, um, 46 summer sports in the Olympic Games. Yes, I said we've recently enjoyed it. Uh, 46 summer sports in the Olympic Games. Then C has three US. Uh, it is Cinderella has three ugly sisters. Cinderella has three ugly sisters. Uh, me, uh, me dit Lloyd Queen Chiara sent these through earlier. It, Took me a while, but I did get that one eventually. Uh, Jens, thank you to Nick for allowing me to contribute with his brilliant pub quiz. Keep the donations coming in. Thank you to everyone who's donated. It's for a great cause. Well, keep up the volunteering, Jens. Absolutely top man. Well done. Uh, OK, uh, let's just... He means 46 sports in the Summer Olympic Games. What did I say? 46 summer sport. Oh, sorry, yeah. I wrote it down wrong. Yes, thank you, Caroline. That one. Yeah, what you said. Good. You know. You Yeah. Uh, right, these. Um... We have Bebida, which is Portuguese. Portuguese for 32. 33, Nomu is Japanese. Ol, it normally has an accent on it, is drink in Irish. And probably something like Yoda, Yoda, Yoda. No, I don't know. I'm guessing. I don't know Finnish. Uh, but anyway, that's Finnish. Uh, and then I basically gave you uh, Inu being Maori by not being able to read my own writing. 
Good. Uh, so, uh, so there we are. Um, what's what's happening, Star Bright? I missed, she has two and a wicked stepmother. Uh, uh, oh, what's detail? Detail. Wow. Controversy, Kiara. Uh, she she can answer yourself. Um, it's what's written down here that matters. And if you got it, you got it. Uh, <laughs> uh, name the years then. Name the years. Um, after those, we have Highway to Hell, ACDC. Um, that was 1979. 1979 uh, was the answer to question 37. Uh, question 38 then. We're going into the 80s. Uh, of course, Sun Away Shines on TV. Aha, 1985. Again, give yourself half a mark if you are a year either side. 1985, have a mark, have half a mark for 84 and 86. Um, and then number 39, Shiny Happy People, REM, was 1991. It was on the album Awesome 2, a compilation I bought and still own. Uh, great album. Um, Shiny Happy People, R.E.M., was 1991. Uh, Joe, all is beer in Swedish, Finland's other official language. Very good. You see, there's a man who knows his drink. Uh, thank you, Joe. Um, and uh, the lyrics then. So we had the years there. 79, 85 and 91. Half a mark for a year either side on all of those. Uh, then question 40. Um, people dancing all in the street, see the rhythm all in their feet. Life is good, wild and sweet. Let the music play on, play on. Uh, it was, of course, All Night Long by Lionel Richie. Those are your answers for our mid-August next pop quiz. Let's see your scores then. Play on, play on, play on, indeed. 34 and a half for Vicky and Rob, right off to the pub. Save us a seat, we'll be there in a bit. Um, then, what do you call a man with a biscuit on his head? Lionel Rich Tea, of course. 29, pretty standard for Star, right? Team Robo Nottingham, a poor second half, 28. Seems the second half scuppered a few. 35 and a half, Boozak and Dave Jones. 34 and a half for the Home Alone, 27 and a half for Mark Godden. Uh, this has been awesome, can't wait for the live quiz. Thank you, Team JK. Uh, Team Carol Baskin got in with 40 and a half, very good. 36 for Maslow's Hierarchy of Nerds, uh, 28 standard from the Sinclairs, 25 out of 40 for Michael and Susan Kinsella, uh, well done Susan. Uh, then 39 out of 41, a fab return and thank you, God bless you. Uh, Angela got a 27 and a half out of the Samoans crew, how did the Mango Lassies get on K? Come on. Uh, 32 for the O'Gradiators, 35 for Wilson Servants. Um, mercy to Nick, Tom and Caroline. 36 for Kate Kremen-Williams. Uh, Jeff Mitchell, 34 and a half. Dennis Beckett, 36. Joe Goscom, 36. 33 for Caroline. 36 and a half for the Newtons Roadies. 31 and a half, we peaked too soon from Sue. Uh, 40 for Claire Varga, very good. Gardens of Harrogate, 27 and a half. Rob with 29, done by the second half. Indeed, seems many of you were. June Ritchie, no relation to Lionel, I'm assuming. 16 in the second half, 33 total. Very good. Gav, 33 and a half, rubbish at those films. Uh, please say hi, Gareth, Nikki, and Sally. Hello. Um, Bubbles Pilates, 36 and a half. The Animals films decimated me. Love that. Uh, thank you, Joe. Great to have you back. Um, it's very nice to be back, albeit briefly. Um, I'm having a bit of a holiday because um, my rugby work's finished. 32 and a half for uh, Zoe, 34 and a half for Gin will fix it, 31 and a half for the Bigs Marshals in Portugal. Kim, thanks for tuning in on your Wednesday in Portugal. Mmm. Maria, rubbish score, but good to be back. Well, look, it's been absolutely lovely to be back. Um, Jeff, see you in Balham, Nick. Well, maybe you will. Um, and there's no secret announcement of, of, a, of a major series coming back, but we will be back. We will be back. There will be more at some point. We will do this again. Um, it was absolutely right and proper to come back in and say hi and check in with everybody. And you have brought it back beautifully and all jumped in um, and, uh, and done it all. Um, Susan, that's very kind. I'm so pleased that we've, we've given that for you um, when Michael was still with you, with us, of course. So, um, so glad you could enjoy this evening with us. Thank you, Pam. Um, and, uh, and thank you to everybody, really. Um, we will be back with Nick's Pub Quiz Live. Um, 
I hope it works for those of you tuning in on the live stream. Uh, you are, you will be part of it, as you always are. Um, there will be a room full of people who have paid money to be there. Not that you don't all contribute anyway. Um, so uh, we'll have a bit of fun. We will, we will enjoy that. We will look forward to you joining us as best you can. In the meantime, look after each other. Have a lovely time. If you've got any holidays to take, do those. Keep safe. Look after each other. Try and avoid this COVID business. Um, and if you haven't had your jab yet, go and have it, because it's fine and it'll make things better. Um, all right, I think that's about us. Uh, God bless you all. Take care, and um, we'll see you soon. <laughs>